Ladies and gentlemen, we meet again in the quest for peace. There's many who doubted that agreement could ever be reached by these 50 countries differing so much in race and religion, in language and culture. They even helped to carry the desks in. We stand today at the threshold of a great event, both in the life of the United Nations and in the life of mankind. This Universal Declaration of Human Rights may well become the international Magna Carta of all men everywhere. In order to eliminate the threat to the peace in Palestine, an armistice shall be established in all sectors. An armistice agreement has been entered into between the United Nations Command and the commanders of the Communist forces in Korea. For the first time in the world's history, a permanent international body to deal exclusively with the problems of non-self-governing peoples. We will be even prouder when we can leave the Congo solely and fully in the good hands of its own people. Dag Hammarskjöld is dead, but the United Nations lives. <laughs> We've seen a return to democracy in many countries. I hereby certify that the electoral process in Namibia has been free and fair. The dawn of a new era. I therefore have the honor to declare the Republic of Namibia membership in the United Nations. I think the major contributor to the success of the election of the Haitian people to decided to come out and to vote on the side of their own destiny. The people of Mozambique who once again their commitment to democracy and a strong will to live in peace and harmony. The Treaty for the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. It is the most important international agreement in the field of disarmament since the nuclear age began. We should not confuse the signing of agreements with the solving of problems. Much work remains to be done, but the significant progress represents real successful diplomacy. United Nations Peacekeeping Forces received the Nobel Peace Prize for 1988. Peacekeeping operations symbolize the world community's will to peace. The creation of a UN Peacekeeping Force for Cyprus could only come about by positive action of this council. The protection of civilians is at the center of the United Nations Peace and Security Agenda. The first session of the International Tribunal for Serious Violations of International Humanitarian Law committed in the former Yugoslavia. We have 113 trucks a day. At the same time, it is not like going through Fifth Avenue. You know, we have to negotiate with checkpoints everywhere in order to make sure that we reach the people. We're starting with no government, no civil services, nothing remains in Somalia except some spirit and some hope. I need your assistance so that I will be able to convince the member state to continue to offer the humanitarian assistance. The right of life, the right to be free from torture and physical maltreatment, the lack of fair trial, limitations on freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of movement. I am here to listen to you. I am here to learn. Tell me, frankly, how you believe the United Nations, myself and my colleagues, can be helpful to you. Minutes ago, an explosion ripped through a hotel in central Baghdad, the headquarters for the UN. The UN and the international community here have been simply stunned by what's happened. Officials are saying they believe it was a suicide attack. A hundred people are wounded and 22 killed. Today we share our shock and sorrow at the loss of people we loved. Democracy, which everybody is striving for, is really a rather meaningless phrase if people don't have enough to eat. The international economic situation has become harsh and unfavorable for all developing countries, especially Africa. Realizing every person's rights to food is a moral and humanitarian imperative. Hunger is a stain on humanity. We are working together as a movement to tackle hunger now and in the future. The humanitarian case 
is clear. It will be the world's poorest citizens who will be hardest hit by climate change. Every week we're seeing evidence that accelerated climate change is here right now. None of this is hysteria. It is fact. And I'm beginning to wonder how many more alarm bells must go off before the world rises to the challenge. Only courageous leadership will make the goals of Paris a reality. Behind every refugee, behind every migrant, there is a family, there is skills, knowledge, there is a story, and above all, I would say, uh, incredible resilience. It is the first intergovernmental meeting in the world where women form part of virtually every delegation. We want to end gender inequality. And we don't just want to talk about it. We want to try and make sure that it's tangible. Unless you do this, it will forever remain. I shall have to use for an indelible blight on human history that it took as long as it has before all of us stood up to say enough is enough. Each Lenten represents the hope we have for our future because of the commitments you have made to the global goals. A renewal of commitment by leader after leader. This is absolutely critical to respond to challenges that affect all countries. We are off track. Let's make it a turning point for people and for planet and deliver a decade of action in achieving the SDGs. The whole humanity uh, is in this fight together. It is, I think, time for unity. Today's United Nations does more than ever before. It does it better than ever before. Yet, our work is far from complete. Indeed, it will never be.